there. Uh, I saw CJ go down. I guess he was trying to get a force going, but in, at the same time, I thought he was going to exchange for off blast. Rainy goes down on the side. Scout is going down as well. A lot of kills being exchanged on the right side of Red Last. Trying to see what exactly these teams are going to do. I would really like to see a little more aggression out of these teams. They're not taking advantage of any little opportunities that they get. Currently, the Blue Scouts, Carolina XCV, trying to get something to happen. Adesca goes down again to the flank. Goldfish mm -hmm. getting a couple of good shots in on him with a 5k streak. Yeah, Romanta's trying to get be ballsy in there with her pocket, but... You know, as it stands, he gets taken down by some pretty nice stickies, pretty nice rockets, and it looks like the advantages are once more going into the absolutely even territory. CJ goes down on blue side in a trade with Lava Field, so, you know, not much going on here. Honestly, Sunshine at the moment is kind of reminding me a little bit of Gully Wash. Sort of getting those off classes in, and I've yet to see any offensive off classes, though, any pick classes from Greatness, which is kind of surprising. Um, yeah. I thought for sure CJ was going to do that a little bit ago when he made the sacrificial walk into the blast. Uh, certainly a spy play would be beneficial right about now, but right now they're just these teams are just sort of content to sit back. Although this demo for Deska on the blue side is thinking about coming in, although he backs out. Maybe, uh, why is there a red player suddenly dancing around in the back of the hill? Salad Tosser gets the blue force right there, and they have no choice but to commit to this push right here. Down goes US Mike, down goes Rainy, down goes Salad Tosser. Sentry is going to be the next thing on the hit list, although Uber is now exchanged. Can the combo, oh, there's a sound on the point, never mind, hold the phone. It's just a medic standing on the point, blocking this for all these words. He gets popped up in the air for the skeet shot, and greatness gets the first round point. You know, it might have been advantageous for Romantis to actually, instead of trying to hold on to her Uber for that long, try and actually go in and, you know, keep more of her team alive just because this last is so large and, you know, more ably gone around. So I am going to watch Yuma Mike on this mid, see what he's going to do, see what sort of stickies he's going to throw out. We do have, you know, people jumping and scouts taking high ground on those things, but we do have a Roamer above point kind of doing a soldier v soldier there along with this Roamer jumping in on the blue medic. Blue medic does go down, which is a really nice pick early on. And so it is 4v3 right now with bad health on blue team. And it looks like they're just going to absolutely out DM people. It's just you must Mike and Romantis kind of securing that point. But with all their pick classes down, the demo flies and takes down Romantis. Good job, Tesca. And that is really scrappy fighting cleaving you must like literally the only person alive on both teams that was absolutely ridiculous i have to say death death everywhere i love it unfortunately in that case when uh the blue medic went down very early on that meant they had no heals so while they were able to out dm on that particular point they didn't have any health to do the cleanup and that allowed you must mike to be able to stay alive long enough to be able to get that point they're gonna get mid here but they're not gonna get the lighthouse gonna be interesting to see how these teams adapt to this new situation most definitely and you know it might have been beneficial for romantis and you must mike to back out a little further if they realized they weren't going to be uber aggressive with the heals it might have been more beneficial to just sort of hold and choke and wait for some that being said it kind of worked out even with the desk a huge problem and you know, advantages are fairly similar for both medics being <laughs> down for so long. Uh, the blue medic is approaching 90 and Romantis is at 90 as well. There's a 10% advantage, which really doesn't count for all that much. We do have flank being fairly aggressive in flank flowers, and the combo does look like there's going to be pushing through there, but that means we don't have a lot of people watching through choke, so I wouldn't be surprised if I'm, we're going to see people going in behind. Um, but, you know, lava field goes down. It's pretty low. We're just trying to get an exchange here, trying to bait people into working something out and it's not really happening right now rockets flying back and forth and both scouts trying to play definitely something notices this roamer really likes cj and he really likes to abuse these fences over in flank ah well if the fence isn't going to be good for climbing you might as well stand on it uh subliminal <laughs> tried to find a piece of the puzzle in pushing on that uh flower side sign although XV xcv goes down somewhere i don't know where that happened exactly but at the moment, Subliminal, here comes the push. Romer bombed in and did a passive jump right there. Down goes Carolina. 
Looks like they're going to be working off of these picks. Does it now go Salad Tosser? Here comes the Uber Exchange right there. Blue has to pop first in order to try to protect this point. Now it's going to be just dancing around inside the lighthouse. Turn the lights on. Hopefully not get too crazy. Down goes Rainy to an Uber Soft. So that's going to be a big 25% advantage right there per hit. And they're going to maintain this push right here. Down goes Lily. And it's going to be just the Medic and the Demo alive for the blue team right here. Actually, if he goes down, or actually, if he gets the red medic right there, it's just going to be Salad Tosser. He went down a while back. It's a really interesting exchange right there. Greatness able to power through that. They're going to be able to capture mid, but hold the foe. There's a rover bomb in the backfield, and he gets taken down. Wow. Um, really good play there's from, uh, plays there from Soapy, who is right now aliasing as there is no Rolex. Which was, it was great of him to sort of bait that uber up, and there's a lot of ridiculous scrappy fighting, and it looks like Red Team will kind of be forced out of here. Demo combo sort of peeking in through that shutter, seeing what they can do, but Lava Field gets taken down, and the blue uber gets popped off. Great job getting that saw off on that scout, as they will be pushing straight through, leaving a scout cap, and trying to get as much damage they can on lap. We have soldiers bombing in, and full scouts dancing around point 2v6, and it looks like this will very handily go to Greatness, who is now up 2-0. I should really stop doing match predictions. They just always lose when I say they'll win. Ooh. Why do you think I just stopped doing those? You're mid, man. All right, I'm gonna go on board with Salatosa here. He's gonna be playing as a roamer for Sublimo right here. Gonna be taking a pretty scenic tour right here. Gotta go through the main out. And once he finally gets airborne, he's gonna be hanging out on the right side. Looks like first contact is going to be straight up on the mid, just 26 seconds into the round. Oh, but the red meta goes down right away. Down goes Salatoster, down goes Rainy. Pretty much casualties are mounting already for Sublimal right here. Pretty much it's going to be a near clean sweep. You must Mike is the last one up. He's dancing out of these points. He's got a couple scouts in his face, and he's going to take a mouthful of shot right there from a scout Carolina. Really good plays from Greatness right there. Their medic went down very early in that mid, but, you know... All holds barred, no holds barred, pardon me. They just kind of go across and absolutely wipe the other team. I mean, what's what's the point in strategy when you can just out DM, it seems like? Our med's dead? All right, we'll just take the rest of your six players with us. So that gives them plenty of momentum to sort of push into sec. We have some people sort of peeking in lobby and trying to hold some room there, but it looks like neither team is really committing as both medics are only at about 36, actually completely even Uber at the moment. We do have an engineer up on Lily for red team, and I believe that sentry is up in the normal plays. Soapy, yeah, it sure is, but you know, honestly being spammed out really hard at this point, I'm surprised the rumor doesn't go direct hit or something, just take care of the sentry on last. The sentry does go down, and so do Lava Field and Rainy, and so that'll definitely be enough impetus for blue team to just sort of flood in here and absolutely DM the hell out of people. Lily comes up on heavy, trying to get a last ditch effort with the scout, trying, but you know, when there are six people on point, there really isn't much you can do as that rumor jumps from spawn, tries a desperate attempt to get on last, and wow, absolutely rolling through. Yeah, I'm not sure this is a case of subliminals just being too passive because they know they can win the DM situation, but at the moment, it's not really playing out for because they're just getting out-strategized at this particular point. It's going to be US Mike again winning the fight to mid, but that hasn't been the deciding factor at this particular point. Blue team's gonna be getting high ground really early on. Both teams deciding to play on the blue side of the field. Salatos is the first one to go down. Meanwhile, casually is just sort of exchanging underneath the point. Right now, positioning is better for the red team right here, but there's a scout in the face of the US Mike right here. They're gonna trade out. It's gonna switch medics and... Hey! <laughs> SCP gets a ham in the face. I tried to make that, tried to chain that up into a nice little combo, but it didn't work out. But anyways, that mid's gonna go to the blue team, and Blue Medic actually tried, I think, to sneak something there. He was way the heck out in La La Land. Yeah, huge bomb here from Subliminal. Both soldiers trying to go in for the med, and both of them being very handily taken down, leaving him, uh, <laughs> leaving them with a fairly, you know, actually disadvantage. They did win the point because they won the DM fight, but as they were jumping forward, trying to get those people out, their medic didn't really have that many people to heal, and so Romantis is on 100%. Looks like both medics will have Uber. Oh my god, Romantis dropped. What a shame during that sort of scrappy sort of fighting going on. Double <laughs> drop! Oh, and a wipe. This is absolutely ridiculous.
And there goes Subliminal, absolutely wiping, trying to go in there, trying to go for broke on that mid, which will leave Greatness to just sort of clean up, using those two soldiers on point instead of shaking their heads. Why did everybody die? <laughs> Well, I mean, at that particular point, you had to do something because right now the score is three to zero. If you're wondering if it's not halftime, UGC rolls. We're still playing a four for a halftime, so you got to get at least an opportunity to get a point on the board. Otherwise, you're going to be down in the hole for match point going to the second half. Soldier bombing in onto the blue side. He's going to try to get this medic right here. Down goes Lava Field. Almost made that work. Food Steam's medic is really lit. In the danger zone right there, but down goes Sella Tosser into the main last. And it looks like it's going to be a dry push, maybe? Thinking positively, oh. Greatness is going to... They're going to go for it. You must Mike goes down. Here they go. They're going to dance around the point. It's a scout. And pretty much just the medic up. And that's it for the half. Wow, there's definitely something to be said for momentum and definitely something to be said for... Carolina there doing some absolutely crazy work. We have doms all across the board on greatness, which definitely sucks for the players on subliminal. I am never saying a team is going to win or lose again, since this always seems to happen, but you're seeing great scout and demo plays with... I would really love to see the stats. I'm not really sure if I can get them, this being UGC instead of ESEA. But, um... It's what probably on sizzling stats somewhere. I'd have to look for it. It's Probably. been a while since I've actually looked for stats for UGC matches, but we'll, we'll get them if we get a chance. I hear some ready-ups going on. Meantime, let me f go, ahead and, go ahead and finish your thought real quick as I interrupted you. Yeah, briefly. I was actually going to ask you, what do you think Subliminal can do to turn it around? What do you think they should change here? I mean, it's really difficult to say right now because everything is happening so quickly that I just think that the situation just develops faster than they can adapt to. And... They're having to commit to one move at a time. So once, once the situation changes around them, like they lose a player, they're not able to adapt very well. And then they just, just I don't know if it's a case that they're panicking and trying to do everything individually, or if they're just, uh, for lack of a better term, just suddenly just losing you to cohesion and just, you know, falling to pieces. Because mm -hmm. what, like we saw on that put, uh, last mid push, for subliminal right there, they pretty much had that point covered, and then bodies just started hitting the floor everywhere. I think we're on the next mid right here. So in the meantime, looking around, Goldfish is going to be the first one to go down. Teams have not switched sides, so it's going to be the same situation for both of them. A couple of scouts onto the red scout right here. He's dancing around trying to see who it is. It's Lily. 4 HP able to get away and somehow, some way, oh, some man. level have actually got this mid right there. That's a lot of talking. I'm just watching this juking going on here. Soapy escaping from that roamer. Carolina's over there at one health trying to meet back up with his medic. And you know, you must Mike and Deska go both down, both go down extremely early on that mid fight. So that was definitely a scout soldier fight. And it looks like, you know, subliminal just caught kind of bullied out there. Sorry, not subliminal. Greatness just got really bullied out there. And we do have an uber exchange in choke, which is kind of great. But that being said, Sophie's going to get uber in a matter of a second. He pops immediately to save his life. Rainy and Lily, both scouts are going down as well as Salad Toss. And they're just going to be pushing through choke as you must Mike is trying to lay some stickies there. Crossbows flying across into the other flank. And you know, they're going to chase as hard as they can. Oh, Maybe down goes Romantis, where Soldier came into the backfield, able to get the cut off, able to get the kill right there. Going to be a significant Uber advantage coming in to last for greatness. Uh, again, they're just, they completely fell apart right there. They didn't have their coverage set. That allowed the soldier to get in on the backfield, able to bomb it. But down goes the blue medic right there. Down goes Goldfish. Blue team is completely wiped right here at this particular point. They've got three spots coming up, but they don't have uh, Lighthouse here just yet. They're going to get this cap. Can they get this point? They need to get this point taken away. Wow, absolutely really ballsy plays there by Subliminal Scouts Rainy and Lily just sort of going in there, absolutely DMing the hell out of Deska. We do have a heavy up and a sniper. Oh man, and an engineer. This is absolutely ridiculous. Deska's this on sniper, XCV is on engineer. They're just parking the bus. There is no way they want to lose this and they're going to defend the hell out of this last point. Key thing right here, it's a pro lander setup. There's a sniper, there's an NG, there's a heavy. There's a lot of firepower hanging around in that last but point. They don't need to move very far. But what'd you say? They also gave up their demo for the sniper. 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's an interesting selection right there. Very interesting selection. I did not notice that. I guess Carolina's not much of an off-classer, so Dusko decided to take it into his own hand. Here we go, surprise sentry in secret, trying to do that knock. The Uber is pushed in, that heavy on point. Oh man, Romantis was down to that sentry. Very nice place. Scouts here trying to clean engineers, shotgunning full. And it two sets up, trying to dance on pull. Soldier trying to go in, and it looks like... Wow, very nice hold there. That surprise sentry really did quite a bit in terms of knockback. I don't think I see anybody hiding, and that is going to be a very decisive hold. The only problem, however, is unless they cap this point, it looks like the other team knows exactly who that sentry is, and there's going to be a lot of fighting on this point. People going back and forth, they know that they can't give this up. They will lose their chance to, you know, win the only point that they have so far, but we do have a pyro actually as well pushing out. It looks like they're going full Prolander, and you know, it seems to be working for them. Deska is back on demo. And the NG is watching last. Looks like SPV does go back to scout there. And, oh, uh, wow, Pyro to mid. Looks like they're going to do a coast-to-coast -coast push. Oh, this is going to be interesting right here, seeing how the Pyro interacts, taking away one soldier. Going to be using that air blast to try to build a little bit of space for his medic right here. Currently seeing they're going to be capping mid right here. There is a... S both soldiers are going to be on the flank right here. Just air reflecting <laughs> all sorts of rockets left, right, center. Down goes Lavaville to the reflect. Zella Tosser goes down, and it's going to be an uber forced by the red team. They're actually going to be able to survive this push somehow, some way they were able to. Uh, but going back to that uh, push on the last, did you notice that they left the sentry on to level 2? Nah, well, level 2 is actually faster to upgrade and to move, so, you know, it kind of makes sense. Rockets do so much, but the knockback is absolutely ridiculous. I was surprised, however, that they did actually consciously take a pyro. I mean... Pyro is great and looks like Goldfish still is on Pyro, which is definitely really strange. But that being said, if you have a Pyro and a Soldier on an equal skill footing, the Soldier is most likely going to win, especially in a situation where like Sixes, where you have people calling the folks, calling all that. This isn't exactly Pubbers we're playing against. Even if they don't expect the Pyro, they sure know how to counter one. And all that really takes is a shotgun or a scattergun to the face. You can't reflect everything, you know? It's basically a slow scout that has the range of a melee demo, but in the meantime, uh, XCV is back on Engineer, and he has moved his sentry to the back middle. Still gonna get good coverage on that point. There is a blind spot right there, but now there's a soldier actually in the backfield. It was Lava Field. Got a good look at where that sentry was, and whoa, hold on, wait a minute. Everybody's dead for the red team. What the heck happened there? Everyone's just sort of decided to push into mid. We had soldiers bombing and Lily gets pushed back along with the team, but you know, they're still coming in to choke and they do manage to cap second. Good job, greatness. And there's a lot of fighting over there. Lily goes in, takes down Deska very easily with a nice domination and Goldfish does switch off of Pyro once he realizes that, you know, maybe his medic needs a pocket more than he needs some reflect. Because honestly, as good as Pyro is at doing that very niche job, it is a very niche job, and while some people can run Pyro out, you see Mailer running Pyro at some higher levels up an invite, and Grape as well. Oh, it hold on, phone, hold on, phone. Romanticist goes wow. down to the rover. CJ oh my takes God. him down. That was ridiculous. Oh, and he is actually able to get uh, Salad Toss with the pocket right there as well Oof, for the price of one. And this is going to be going all the way back, I believe. Uh, Subliminal just has one scout trying to protect this point right here. He's going to be dancing around. Can he take the 1v5? Uh, no, that's not happening. Man. Lava Field goes down as well to the process. I think they're going to be able to push straight in. There's just a medic up. There's just a scout. There's just a soldier. There's not a whole lot of firepower available right here. They're straight in. They're going to pop the Uber for good measure. There's one little scout just dancing around trying to protect the point. Going to go for the defense right there. Down he goes. Goldfish comes in with the flames. Keeps the pirate, keeps the medic pin down, and <laughs> GG. Oh wow, the premature taunt on point. It looks like there is just a lot of mojo won and lost there. So that's GG's on both sides, and there is some kind of ridiculous mix-ups there in terms of off-classing. And while I do always love to see off-classing, it's definitely really strange to see a pyro being run that often, and definitely really frustrating for the other team in my experience. Nobody complains quite as much as a Sixes player playing against a pyro. I remember the old saying, Pyro class is the devil. So in the meantime, uh, let me look for stats real quick. Uh, it's going to be a little bit because we have to dig through sizzling stats right here. Mm -hmm. uh, as you as you dig, I'll just talk a little bit since that'll be something I'm really good at. It looks like 
Subliminal did very good. Their scouts are doing well. But I think what they ended up really lacking is that they couldn't shift gears well enough. So you had this uber aggression. You had the scouts going and making room, making pick. And you saw that a great amount in the second half. But when it came time to back up or to play passively, either they played too passively or they didn't play passively quick enough. They didn't really have a good judge on that momentum. That thing you'll hear me talk about forever in my cast is momentum. Because sixes, even if it's five CP, even if it doesn't say tug of war, it really is a game of tug of war between points. And we do have some stats. Thank you, Ken. Yep, wonderful. Took, yep, took a little bit of digging, but I found them. It's, it's going to be divided up into two pieces because it's uh, sizzling stats, so it divides based on halves. So in the meantime, we'll take a look at the first half stats. Take a look right here. The main stats right here. Best damage right now on the, on the server for the first half appears to be a close tie between Yuma Smike at 353 DPM compared to 351 for Goldfish Soldier on Greatness right there. Wow, team damage though, it definitely looks like, although Yuma Smike did well, it looks like the other team just sort of stepped it up in between the soldiers and the demo, just kind of putting that out there. <laughs> Yeah, damn. Uh, the key thing to look right there is look at the total frags. For Greatness, it was 62 frags compared to just 33 for Subliminal right there. So pretty much that tells the story right there is uh, Subliminal was dead most of the time, or more yeah. often than not. Lily, one of the scouts, actually showing up as an engineer on the stats just due to the amount of being pushed back to last. Kind of ridiculous. And, you know, there goes the two uber drops on both sides. That was a ridiculous fight. And, you know, second half, we just, we see a lot more sort of even damage. But that being said, Greatness did out damage the other team entirely by about 2,000. And frag wise, same thing. It just looks like out damage, the frag, maybe, maybe not even out position, just sort of out DM'd. Yep. Yep. That is the main thing is if you're dead, you can't do anything uh to help your team so that's pretty much going to be the key thing for to take away from this match and with that i believe we're about out of things to talk about so atwes do you have any shout outs real quick uh shout outs to dreamboat for messaging me 10 minutes before the stream was going to go live asking me if i can ca cast with you and so no shout outs to him for hooking me up with a great other casting partner it's been great casting with you kinch uh, no, 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 you've been, you've been the better of the two casters right here tonight. Uh, uh, shout out again also to Dreambo, because he also put me in the same situation right there, so I imagine he had some ulterior motives in mind, but anyways, I digress. Shout out to our cameraman tonight, Ron Dago, doing awesome camera work as per usual. He's pretty much been the MVP the past couple of weeks for EVL TV right there. Uh, shout outs to you lovely viewers. Always great to have you along for the ride. And again, EVL TV is casting five nights a week, usually six. Depends. We'll see how it goes this Sunday, but I digress. Uh, so let's go ahead and sign off right here uh, for EVL TV, Rodego, Atlas. I've been Kinch. Thanks for watching. And by the way, before I forget, tune in later tonight. You'll be able to catch some more Atlas. Uh, she'll be casting uh, EVL TV on ESCA Intermediate, I believe it is. Is that Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yep, I will be casting with Deer tonight, and we've been pretty much the mainstays Wednesday nights on EBL TV. That's our main channel. And, you know, thanks to all the viewers and all the players especially. I think I saw some of them down in Twitch chat. Thanks for giving us stuff to cover. It's all thanks to you guys. It certainly has been. So, so for now, see you later. Good night.